for computing vag of any company a financial analyst needs to consider certain risk factors so that there should be some consistent in the computation of vag for the company and one such risk factor is called as beta now what is beta if we define beta beta is a parameter that measures the riskiness of investment with reference to the riskiness of the market as a whole in fact a uh, beta is required when we compute the cost of equity through the capital asset pricing model the estimation of beta is not an easy task however there is a model commonly known as a market model through this model we can estimate the value of beta uh, while regressing the uh, re returns of a company against the returns of market so the resulting value is called as the beta if we de uh, derive the equation of this regression model we can have an equation like rt is equal to a hat plus beta hat into rm and for over the time period of t this regression is done in this equation a is the estimated intercept of the equation and beta is the estimated slope of the regression that is used as an estimate in order to measure the riskiness of the investment with reference to the whole market beta estimates are very much sensitive to the estimation model and the data used in the estimation these factors include estimation period like the period is shorter or the long term periodicity of the return in interval whether we have daily returns quarterly returns or monthly returns the selection of an appropriate market index like we have a ksc 100 index in pakistan or the use of smoothing technique what smoothing technique we we are using in order to smooth the returns and the final are the adjustments for small capitalization stocks uh there are certain risk factors that can have a significant effect on the value of beta we can divide the systematic component of risk into two components like business risk and financial risk business risk can also be further classified into revenue uncertainty or sales risk or the operating risk so far as the sales risk is concerned this this risk occurs due to the a uh, demand elasticity of the product and cyclicity of the revenue and the nature of competition in the market so far as the operating risk is concerned this risk occurs due to the combination of variable and fixed operating cost incurred in the business operations the second major component is the financial risk this risk occurs due to the variation in a uh, net income and the net cash flows that are attributable to the debt in terms of interest payment and the payment repayment of principal uh, this means that in a, any company if the value of debt is higher than the value of equity then the riskiness of that firm with reference to financial risk is much higher to determine or estimate beta for a listed or quoted company is very much easy because number 1 the returns of such company are easily available uh, on on any uh, stock exchange where the firm is listed two uh, it is very much easy to use simple regression model to regress the company's return against the market returns in order to estimate the beta and third the value of beta can also be uh, uh, obtained from the professional financial analysis vendors but so far as estimation of beta for an unlisted firm is concerned it is much challenging job it is uh, not an as easy to work out 
however uh, there is a solution and the solution is that we can use a proxy beta for such companies or a project uh, using uh, the company's specific available information in combination with the beta of some other comparable listed company now uh, the question arises that how to estimate the beta of a quote, unquoted or an unlisted firm for that purpose we have a method commonly known as a pure play method uh, in this method we works in step steps uh, first we identify a comparable listed company whose beta is adjusted for financial leverage differences found between the comparable company and the target company then uh, this process is generally involves unlevering and levering the betas now what is a comparable company uh, by comparable company we mean a company that has a similar business risk the method is known as pure play uh, because uh, an easy way to identify a comparable company is to find such a company that has a similar industry or has a similar line of business this means that the riskiness of the of that firm is similar to the risk level of the target firm the pure play method works in four steps in step 1 we need to select a comparable company that has a similar level of risk as the riskiness of the target company in the second step we need to estimate the equity beta of the comparable company then in the third step we need to unlever the equity beta of the comparable company through the removal of a financial risk component but we would be retaining the business risk component in that particular beta this means the beta with the remaining uh, risk component will be termed as the asset beta so we are unlevering the equity beta of the comparable company into the asset beta of that comparable company in the fourth step we will lever the project's beta uh, by adjusting the asset beta for the project's specific financial risk this means that the asset beta we found in third step will be converted into levered beta of the project using the financial riskiness and financial capital structure information of that particular project or the target company now how this unlevering and levering of the beta would take place we know that any company's equity beta can be unlevered in order to estimate the asset beta this means that in order to do that we have to develop a relationship between the assets and equity of the company uh, this means that we have to develop a relationship between the market risk of the company's assets and uh, and the market risk of the company's equity so we are we are computing the company's assets beta and equity beta we also know that a company's risk is generally shared by its creditors and its owners and the company's asset risk is basically the weighted average risk of the market riskiness of its debt and the market riskiness of its equity if we derive an equation we can de de develop an equation by saying that beta a yeah asset beta is equal to the weighted average beta of uh, uh, debt and weighted, weighted average beta of equity now uh, we we know that uh, the there is a ratio between debt and equity and in order to determine that ratio we need to divide individually debt and equity with the total capital here we know that interest is a tax admissible item this means that when computing the weight of debt in the total capital the debt weight will be lesser than the total debt due to the tax shield 
and to compute the after tax effect of debt we need to uh, we need to multiply the debt with the uh, uh, factor of 1 minus t here t means the marginal tax rate and we mean uh, here that a uh, debt due to secured payment against the company's asset has no market risk this means that the return on debt does not vary with the market return and this further means that the beta of debt or the riskiness of debt is equal to zero then we uh, mean that the beta of asset is similarly equal to the beta of equity and if we rearrange this equation we can have a beta of asset is equal to the beta of equity or equity beta uh, with a, a factor of the company's non-diversifiable uh, 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 financial risk. Uh, so we can say that the market risk of a company's equity is basically affected by the assets market risk and a non-diversifiable risk of the company's financial component. On the screen, we have an example. Suppose a company has an equity beta of 1.5, a debt equity ratio of 0.4 and a marginal tax rate of 30%. Then what would be the company's asset beta? So we have an equation of asset beta to first it unlever. The resulting beta is 1.17. Now, if we assume that there is a company which have no debt then its asset beta is equal to equity beta which we have just computed at 1.17 now we assume that if we increase the debt this beta will also be increasing uh, using this example we can compute the equity beta given the company's debt equity ratio of 0.5 so putting these value into the equation of equity beta we have an equity beta of 1.59 so when we have unlevered beta the value is 1.17 and while levering this asset beta we have the equity beta which is 1.59 so the conclusion is that the unlevering computation produces a company's asset beta without considering its capital structure so we did not consider capital structure of the target company in our computation of asset beta. But when, when we are levering the computation for the target company's equity beta, then we are using certain factors like asset beta, which is, which is unlevered beta, the target company's cap tax rate and the target company's capital structure, which is 0.5 in our example so in this way we can determine a project's equity beta through the process of pure play method while levering unlevering and levering certain betas